go. Good evening and welcome to Open Minds Live chat show, streaming live only from YouTube. The link is on the Facebook page. I'm Gloria and I have a returning guest, William. I still can't say his surname correctly. I'll have a go. Stowell. That Stowell. works. Stowell. 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 There we go. And I'm English. Um, William Stowell. Um, welcome back, William, to um, this is now Open Minds Chat. So last time you was on Inception, how are you? I'm fantastic, although it does boggle my mind because my, my last name or surname, as you say, is, is British in origin. I know you e told me. You told me, and I still can't get it right. I'm still even, that's all right. These things happen. Stop. But, I, stop. Did, um, I did write it down last time phonetically, didn't I, so I'd get it correct. Mm -hmm. um, but I just don't want to show you how perfect I am, so I love right. to make this. Well, it gives, us, it gives us something to talk about. At it the does. Beginning of the show. It's an it icebreaker does. is what they call it's it. It's an icebreaker to lift the energies up and go. But we are going to have part two of Anomalous Experiences. And I sort of put some subtitles in this one where we can take this anywhere down the rabbit holes. I've added one actually since um, we've been talking. So we've got energy personalities, mm -hmm. which is a Seth terminology, which like Treb from Rob Gothia, the ET Whisperer, or ET or Turians, they're all energy personalities. And we both had the sort of a brief discussion how to reflect back that we are also these energy personalities. So instead of the polarity of the separation of different civilizations different races different blah we're trying to home it into a one energy personality but we will go into that and we have expanding our realities so i mean since last time we spoke i know my um reality has expanded in ways i never saw at all or imagined and you've got some changes going on in yours and then we've got the timelines which really due to the expansion of our realities individually and anyone else, it's about me and you tonight, um, the timelines have shifted and things are different. So we will touch upon Seth, obviously, because um, Seth, you are a lover of Seth like I am. And according to the ET Whisperer, you're um, well-versed in Seth. <laughs> um, so we'll bring, we can bring that in at any point you want. So it's an organic conversation. You could start off anywhere you want. Where do you want to go? Time well, away. we'll start talking about Seth, actually. Uh, oh, let's go. Let's go. One of the things we mentioned was you think it's time for a Seth resurgence. Yes. And I um, I couldn't agree more because actually one of the other things we were talking about mm -hmm. before the show, not we certainly are keeping a lot of secrets from the audience, but we were also talking about Alan Watts and how there's yes. a, res a resurgence of Alan Watts in my daughter's yes. generation. Because yes. people who have taken Alan's um, teachings and mixed them with really groovy music, mm -hmm. you know. So I've got my daughter who, since she was, she's 19 now, it, probably since she was 13 or 14 years old, I've mm -hmm. heard her listening to Alan Watts with some really groovy music. And it's it's stuff that anybody would like, you know. I know music is subjective, but it's just something that gets you in the, in the mindset of absorbing the words that he's saying. I and agree. And a whole generation... You know, where, where would you and I have gotten that when we were 13 or 14? For me, it would it have wouldn't, been... It a, wouldn't have happened. Way back right. in the day, when I used to listen to Alan Watts, it was his lectures. And it was out of these very academic, intellectual discourses. And then I'd catch bits through. And I have to say, what your daughter listens to, I still listen to. It does, it's got, it's, it's got this ambient music that is just low enough, low enough. And it really resonates with, and they take clips from his um, lectures and statements, right. and it works because I, you know, I just re-listen. Whenever I need like a, a boost of Alan Watts, I listen to that. And one thing it seems with Seth, the resurgence of Seth material and Alan Watts, they're basically talking about exactly the same thing, but just with a slightly different perspective which is, is just beautiful for me. And it has been um, Seth recently. I mean, I did say on the show a couple of weeks ago, I, something, an experience happened, and then it was go back and read Seth 
I'm going, what, what? And I'm now I'm not a, a book reader no more. I've had enough reading. So what I did, 20 hours of audio book, yeah? Right. On, and and I, I couldn't move from the audio book. And it was better for me. It was just I was absorbing things I'd never heard before, even though I was aware of the Seth materials. So it was like, go back, there's more. And I could not believe that. Then after Seth, I went back and did a, another 10-hour audio book of um, Neil Donald Walsh uh, talking to God for some reason as well. So there's another one that's resurging again. So, Well, that's what I was, what I was saying is... Um... You know, you could just click on the internet and get Alan Watts's lectures mixed with with nice music, mm. but that wouldn't have even existed. Not to give away our ages or anything, but no. for us, you would have been lucky to get a copy of just his lecture on a record. Yes. Yes. Forget any music or or, or yes. uh, refinements to it. Yes. You know, like now it's boosted in high definition with you know yes. stereophonic sound, and mm -hmm. um, so so the point of that is that kids just have access to. Um, to Alan Watts and Seth, what, what I was about to lead into that yes. you did is that I read all the Seth books. Like well, as yeah. soon as I got my hands on Seth Speaks, mm -hmm. I tracked them down. This was 2004 is when I read my first Seth book. Um, and I kept going I f probably until I think I got through with them in like 2010 or 2011 or something like that. So it was a period of years. But you, Rob, Rob Gauthier, who is a very powerful uh, channel, He's never read a Seth book in his life. It's only because of audio books and videos. Yeah. So yeah. this is what I was saying about the resurgence aspect of it all yeah. is that um, I'm never going to say that print is dead, but, but because of the internet and how accessible yeah. it is, yeah. people of any age can now digest the Seth book. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I must admit reading, um, you know, I, I even rewatched the Jane Roberts film videos, old black and white ones. But reading Seth for me before, but audio is better for me. Audio. Mm -hmm. uh, I am a visual learner. I'm audio and visual learner. I'm an artist, for God's sake. So, you know, that's how I take in information. But for me, um, it's, I don't think I could ever pick up another book. Mm -hmm. I go for the, when I do want to read something, I go for the audio book. Right. I, I tend to now take more information in audio yeah than by visual by reading so but that is for even our generation us slightly maturish and i'm slightly slightly mature than you or the new generation the younger generation they like audio alan watts audio seth imagine audio it's 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 the power and it's the right time for the resurgence of seth it is the right time because everything and we can go into seth because it will affect the timelines expanding our realities and what Seth named energy personalities. Everything he said now has, we've gone through that play and is now in this timeline. Do you, does that resonate with you? It does. Um, we were talking earlier and actually I do want to give you my undivided attention, but I would be remiss beyond words if I didn't send this to you to get out to the people that are watching this broadcast. A while ago, um, I read extensively from the Seth book, The Individual and the Nature of Mass Events. I'm going to forward it to you over on Facebook, and maybe you can get okay. it to, so we can tie it to this broadcast. And it's uh, specifically, <clears throat> excuse me, specifically, and you guys might be able to read between the lines as to why I did this, but in that book, Seth talks about viruses and pandemics. Yeah. And I went through every single page, line for line, and anything that had anything to do with mm -hmm. viruses and pandemics, I read mm -hmm. using my professional radio announcer voice. Yes. And uh, I wanted to get, it's my gift to the world. I, that might seem a little lofty or whatever, but um, it, it was really quite useful, especially if you're focused in around this energy of viruses and pandemics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and about how that interplays with the, creating your own reality. But this energy personality essence thing, when I was reading the Seth books, it never occurred to me. It, I always took Seth at his word that he was, what he said he was, an energy personality essence, and yeah. that he had been a human being and was now a discarnate entity or an entity mm -hmm. without a body. Mm 
Mm-hmm. It never occurred to me until I ran into uh, Rob, the ET whisperer, that people could yeah. be channeling space aliens, yeah. which is a distinction that uh, the whole point of what we're trying to break down is that it's an unnecessary distinction. They're yes. all energy personality essences. It doesn't matter yes. if he happens to be living as a seven foot tall uh, space reptile right now. No. That's only uh, transitory at best. Yeah. yeah. So, so, and then and we'll tie that in. It, it, how he, he linked him, which I was, was saying, it's so needed now. Even my linguistics are changing. Is like I'm really trying every time to call it energy personalities to stop the polarity. One, the human polarity. We're still going to have polarities, but we we need to change the linguistics on it. But then in the recognition, well, hey, I'm an energy personality too, and the two parts, energy, the consciousness, and the personality, the personal autonomous. He didn't like the word soul. He liked entity. Right. Because it had religious connotations with the word soul. and He, he did have issues with the word soul. But I think more so with the religious connotations. He really was trying to, because it is sort of like blemished with that. However, mm. many of us say, I am consciousness having a human experience. I am this. In fact, where energy, personalities, there's no distinction at all. It, I suppose... How does this sound? An analogy I can give off the cuff is, you know, like we have different races and cultures, yeah? Right. Um, and we said, do not discriminate, so to speak. And, and you know, in how we've overcome racism and um, culturism and all that, and where we, we don't even notice whether the person's a certain race, culture, religion, unless it's in your face. Mm-hmm. And this is what's needed, I think, now with these energy personalities that you may call Greys, they're called Arcturians, they're called Mantis, um, Reptilians, da, 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 da. Yes, I think the labels were needed at some point for a period of time until it was the right time to shift. But now I, it's, it seems like I have no issue with everything being an energy personality, the personality and the information and the data that they're sharing with you. you right. Oh, no, this is, uh, but see, Gloria, this is a very uh, cultivated experience mm. because, as you know, I'm a social scientist, not that yeah. I do any, it's not like I have a shingle outside of my door that's a social scientist practicing, yeah. Yeah. but um, a lot of this, when you're talking about linguistics, it's so important because the words we use define our reality, which, as you know, yes. metaphysically defines our world, yes. but we're coming from what may have been necessary at the time, but was ultimately very destructive, this Sigmund Freud era of dividing our constant uh, our personality up into the id the ego the super ego yeah. Yeah. so we we can't help but have these divisions in ourselves and people still yeah. to me and i've talked with rob about this not to put words in his mouth but this um this is one of the most destructive things i think in our we'll say spiritual community is this idea of constantly assailing and trying to kill your own ego yeah. which seth has said many times and uh yeah. An art of and any any serious yeah. metaphysical teacher I listen to says this is not possible. The ego right. is how you interact with the world. If yeah. you kill one, another one is just going to naturally rise yeah. up to take its place. Because um, this was a very big popular thing coming out of the Freud, the Sigmund Freud thing mm. in the 1960s in America during the Great Acid Wave. Uh, it was part of you know the electric Kool Aid acid test was to try and kill your ego. Apparently, mm-hmm. this is what became the function of acid became. Uh, which is possible, you know, but you're just going to bring back a fragmented and distorted version of yourself. Well, another, another mark two of the ego. I mean, I always say, I've always said the ego is your friend. Well, personally, the ego is your friend. Yeah. If you resist it, it will persist. And I, I give you an example. Like the ego was, I don't know, say for example, it's, um, you said something to me. My ego got offended. All right. Mm. Um. Way back in the day, I would have come back at you and gone, you fucking, blah, blah, blah. do you know what I mean? But what ha- what the process of how the ego, which is still consciousness, it's a fractal of the being I am, the energy personality, it comes up, I feel a re- I'd feel a reaction, and I'd, I'd observe it and go, thank you. I've got to work on my reactions. Thank mm. you. It, this so-called ego, I've started to see it as a friend. Not to resist it. You cut if you resist it, persists. But when you start to say, "Oh, thank you," 
without this labeled ego, we would never have been able to experience polarities. Right. Or other. right. If you haven't got an ego, you can't experience the, the human experience. Well, it may seem it may seem divorced from the concept, but I'm thinking that this this whole uh, Freudian idea of splitting the self up also plays into this whole energy personality essence thing. Because mm -hmm. right now, if these beings came there, the, the, end, the end goal is that we're all one. You know, we're all one, whether you're a human being living in the UK or a giant <coughs> uh, you know, but to, to, to get past these divisions, we have to get past the divisions that exist in our own selves. Absolutely. Because, and the, the other thing that goes hand in hand with this, there's two things, actually. If I can smash out what cool. I think some of the negative, most negative beliefs are that are, are perpetrated by, we'll call it the love and light spiritual community, is that one, the ego is bad. You know, and that you have to kill the ego, and that the self is bad, and that you. And I'm always surprised that this persists in our, we'll say, our community, because this seems like something borrowed from Catholicism, and, and yes. So I don't know why it carried over to, to spirituality. Um, you know, of course, Eastern religion talks about uh, overcoming yourself, but that I don't think they mean it in the same way that we do over here with killing the ego. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the idea that human beings are somehow divorced from nature and that we are a blight on the planet. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe some of us are, but that's not the role of human beings. And as long as you personally are living your life as a steward of the planet, mm -hmm. you really can't control what anybody else does. No, you it's know? not your business to control what anyone else does. It's, we all know. I mean, yeah, I mean, there has, it seems like, how can I put this? When I, when I st kicked off the show, starting, it's it, the real resurgence of Seth. Mm. It's like that timeline of what you've just spoke about, them two areas, is shifted away. Now that's been clear, is gone. We went through like a period of this love and light. It went on for some time, but it was a stepping stone. It was a stepping stone to get, I suppose, to ease, consciousness knows what it's doing, to ease out of excuse me, the dogmatic control victim mode. Mm -hmm. um, it was a stage to come through. But for me, with the resurgence of, of Seth, the energy personalities, and the accelerated contact that is going on, and I'm talking timelines crossing, them in our timeline and being witnessed by many, yeah? I don't know mm -hmm. people are out there waiting for some disclosure, but you've missed the boat it's already happened um, right that's very it's, passe at this point it's, it's very i don't know i hear people saying this kind of you've missed the boat it's already happened actually in the physical timeline they're here um it may not be what you think it is however so we, it seems to it's, it's like it's still it's a natural organic process that where when i say the the, the energy personality is the chamber of linguistics the expansion of the reality, the timelines just, I mean, I, they're just shifting like you can't even stay on a timeline now. Right. And the other thing is, and I don't, I, I know we've gotten a little bit away from Seth, but this is ultimately, we'll go, we'll go back, we'll go back. This is ultimately Seth's message. I think Seth would approve of some of the things we're talking about right now yeah. in this regard. Um, so to get back to what I was saying earlier, human beings, we have to get over the fact of killing our ego because that's just not going to happen and not, not the goal. Uh, we are not separate from nature. We are creatures living in nature. We are part yeah. of nature. This is totally evident to anyone who lives in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, I can go off on a whole other side here where if you're spending most of your days in a city, mm -hmm. I realized this when I left New York. And I don't know if I mentioned this to you last time or not. After I, I moved away from New York in the mid 90s and then about um, when Facebook got big, like 2012, 2013, mm -hmm. I reconnected with a lot of these people that I hadn't spoken to since the mid 90s. Mm -hmm. And they're on Facebook bitching and complaining about how they have all these problems with life. And I know now from living way out in the forest, mm -hmm. the problems they're talking about, they're not life problems. They're New York problems. Yeah. There's a problem yeah. you get from living in a city. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, to, to digress from that a little bit. Uh, if you live in tune with the land, there's no question what your what your role in all of this is. It becomes very obvious to you. You're working with animals on a day to day basis. You just watch the seasons go by. You, you, you know, you cut the grass, and you act like a steward to the planet. So I don't think that we're somehow 
detrimental to to the earth just by us existing. No, Otherwise, I mean that is uh, that comes from um, religious script, especially Catholicism. Okay, well, um, all of all of that, the root cause is coming from that. Um, you're born in sin. That's it. You're done. You're doomed. Let's forget yeah. about you here. Um, you know, and you may stand a chance later on if you. So that you we know tithe heavily. Tithe yeah. heavily. <laughs> no, I'm a little cynical about having grown up Catholic. You know. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I mean, you can see where that goes. I mean, but what's happened now? I mean, um, let, let let me kick this off. It will always relate to Seth because um, a couple of weeks ago when I had an encounter. I had an experience, an encounter, um, you know, everyone has them differently, but the way I got it, and it was this, read Seth again. It was like coming in, and it was a, it was like a joy, go, go. And I said, I can't read a book again. I, I, I spent decades reading research, and I can't do this, yeah? Um, and it just went, audiobook. And I spent two days, hour after hour, I did nothing but listen, stop, absorb, listen. And one thing about an audio book, you can just pause it, absorb, go back in straight away. You know, you don't right. have to pick up anything, you know. And then that, well, then it shifted even more in my reality. So it's like one thing to the next to the next. It was Seth, timelines, expansion, energy, personality. And it kept going. And I didn't quite grasp it at first what was happening to other experiences come. Everything changed. Right. Everything I perceive started to shift quicker and quicker. This area Seth does speak about. What do you recall in the Seth material where he talks about things to come? <laughs> well, one of the things, um, and I hate to paraphrase Seth, but there's no other way of doing it is that uh, we are heading towards a saner world as long as we can get our act together. And it seems as if we have. And I think with what I know about Seth's materials is that the, and, and he says this actually, let me see if I can quote him exactly. Basically um, the individual is the supreme point of power. And that's, that's exactly what we're heading for. In the past, mankind had conventions. You know, you would become a part of a community or a church or, you know, you go through school with a class of people and you graduate. And if you're a woman, you do this. And if you're a man, you do that. Uh -huh. uh, you might join the service. And then you have, I thought about this years ago, years ago, it occurred before I ever learned anything about metaphysics. I started thinking like when I'm 15 in Virginia, I can get my learner's permit. But when 15 and eight months, I can, I got a driver's license and 17, I can, I can enlist in the air force and I can vote and buy things when I'm 18 and at 21 is alcohol. And I started thinking like, well, what happens after that? Like, basically there's no, society doesn't have any more mile markers for you. So your, your life kind of becomes stagnant. Uh, this is the way I used to think, you know, this is, you know, years ago, I was very young when I had this realization. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the way that it used to be is you'd be a part of some group, you know, you would, uh, you'd have your, yes. your church group. Or now there are no more saviors. There's no more yet. Yeah, obviously churches and schools and all these things exist, but they're fragmenting like never before. And uh, man, a man or a woman is um, going to find themselves alone. You have to be the instrument of your own salvation is what the U S Marines used to say. You have to be. I mean, the but it is basic. I mean, that's what Alan Watts says. That's what um, Seth says. Um, no one's coming to save you. No group. Don't go external, go internal. It's internal. Um, and I want to bring into that because, you know, there's so much to cover here, but I want to start bringing in the energy personalities mm -hmm. here as well, is not only was Seth an energy personality for Jane Roberts, yeah, as, you know, um, Treb and Ardiff is to Rob. Um, but this is happening. These energy personalities are coming in individually to, you know, the common Joe, the common humans now. Now, we spent a good few decades from the 50s of ET experiences, abductions. I don't like the word, but I've got to use it currently. And I'm one of them since childhood, okay? That, I know personally, that has changed. You, you haven't got so many of what we call, they label the abductions, because the interaction and the crossover, the timelines, yeah, coming through is very much more like Seth and Jane Roberts, 
Rob and Treb and Ardiff and many other valid channelers out there. Does this resonate with you? What, where, where the, the, the reality has expanded to such an extent um, and shifted our timelines that these energy personalities are now, everyone is experiencing some form of channeling, mm -hmm. not a channeler, but the channeling is coming from within. You can call it soul. Right. Or or a higher self, it doesn't matter. How does that resonate with you now? Well, remember, like the only reason that reality's expanded is because you and I have expanded. Yes. And you and I happen to be in a crossover reality now. Yes. yes. But this, um, you know, not to not to sound negative or anything, but I've noticed people that are not expanding and they're yes. really bad. Some of these people look like they have, um, I don't want to say demonic possession, but they look, uh, they look like they have no soul. There's people walking the streets that... Uh, they just empty, but the people that are expanding themselves and working on themselves seem to be having rapid growth. Well, I, I want to jump in there. This is what we can do. We're just having a chat. I was talking to a couple of weeks ago with Brandon Thomas. I had him on my show, and I said I'm noticing. You know, they say there's eight million beings on Earth. I personally don't think there's eight billion. I don't know how many there is, but a lot of them are not real. They're like, you know, projections. <laughs> NPCs, um, non-playable characters. Yeah, yeah, and they're like just portraying a part to play the game. Does that make sense to you? And mm -hmm. maybe we're actually, I don't know, it, it, um, it's just come in, I'm just putting out, maybe, maybe we're just realizing that. Maybe that's the awareness coming in where we're saying, where I will say they're like the walking dead, mm -hmm. but there's no such thing as the walking dead. So I'm trying to articulate through linguistics, what I'm experiencing. Being a medium, if um, I meet people, I read their energy. So they could be pissed off energy, happy energy. I fancy you energy. I hate you. You know what I mean? You read, mm. everyone reads a per. But when you meet these, you're like, they're void. So maybe, maybe that is true. I don't know. What do you think about that? I don't know. Well, what started this was my sister uh, asked a question of Ardiff through one of the ET Whisperer sessions that we were doing. She had, we were driving and she was in a car behind us and she, there looked like there was a guy who was dead at a gas station that we passed by. Mm -hmm. She said, well, I'll go check it out. And as she did, there was this woman who had basically empty eye sockets with no yeah. eyes that was like coming after her and chased her down on the road. And obviously she wanted to know what the hell this was all about. Mm -hmm. So she asked Ardiff, and Ardiff had said that there are certain people who died between densities that are still walking the earth, that once they realize that you can see them, for some reason they blame the living for this condition that they're in. And yeah. they just you would never notice that they were actually dead. Uh, Do you know, know what? That, that resonate. Let me, let, hold on. As a medium, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I don't do platforms, so I'm labeled right. a rescue medium. There are spirits out there that have left the physical body but don't know they're dead. I'm telling you, they do not know they've passed from the physical and transitioned to the spirit. They right. there is their, own, their energy personality, and they don't. It could have been because it was so traumatic, or something, or whatever. I have no problem with that, but I am I am becoming more and more aware as I people watch, and I've always been a people watcher, always, that you're going, something's not right. <laughs> and I'm not the only one, and I actually did experience a couple of weeks ago, they were not human, and I had a witness. They were not human. Right. Um, yeah. That's... An energy personality, but not the dead, so to speak. They were in the physical timeline I was in. They were there. Well, that's... Um... This kind of, this all plays into the topic at hand because what I was saying earlier about how you have to become more individualized, uh, yeah. and that's where humanity is heading. That once you become more of an individual, yeah. your total individual self, uh, you won't be able to help but notice that you're an energy personality essence. Yes. You know, and yes. how and how others are like you're right. Like there are people out there, and I don't want to, I don't want to sound like I'm dehumanizing the homeless or anything. I don't know if we can call them people. There, there are energy personalities out there that, right? 
Um, well, in the area that I'm living in, there has been an uptick in the in the homeless population. And again, yeah. I don't want to blanket homeless people with this whole statement. Mm -hmm. But some of them, and I know drug use is a part of this, I think drug use might leave you open to certain types of possessions, mm -hmm. um, you know, hangers on or the types of beings that, that can inhabit your body. But they just wander. It's like they walk forever. You don't, you don't ever see them eat or sleep. I mean, not that I'm following around the homeless or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. But there are some of them that just seem otherworldly. Well, see, and I'm going to come from um, and what's from a Seth perspective that each entity or soul chose the experience they chose. Mm -hmm. It's part of the whole collective game. So I'm looking, when you we speak about some of them could be non-human, it's fine, um, but it's for us to notice for us to become aware what for every reason but if they are um the um energy personality that's chosen to come in and play their role in this in this theater as the homeless to behave like this um with whatever way they come through if they've got what we perceive to be negative energy which even separately is not negative at all it's our perception of it it's for us to notice i think the fact that we're really noticing it and we're more sensitive to it now than we've ever been before is a sign or a pointer, if anything. Not that we we don't quite know what's going because we're just experiencing it in the flux now. Right. Have I lost you there? Or does I, did that make sense? No, it did. Well, it was making me think that the other important thing is to see how people react to us. Those of us that are existing in sort of a higher realm with higher energy. Uh, yeah. I've noticed there are people that you know won't come into my sphere. No. If I move a certain way, they'll move further away. You know, it's Say just hallelujah. Good. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. They, they can't right. respond to your higher energy in any meaningful way. No. So and there's no reson you don't resonate no more. It's yeah. like if you hanged out with someone, I mean, trust me, I I could be an arsehole sometimes now. Often I piss you off, but there you go. But way back in the day, I was an arsehole and I attracted arseholes and we all did arseholely stupid things. Yeah. Right. That, it was a collective. And you mentioned something earlier on. It's about your social determinants, where you are, your environmental determinants that shape the belief systems you're in, okay? So, but then if you go through um, what I call um, the self-realization process that every being, any every energy personality on this planet is going through now, um, as what, I don't like to say anyone's higher or lower, but as your frequency changes, you chose to do it this way, you will attract, your, they will dissipate and fall away. The, you know, the negative, what you call negative, I call them negative Nellies, it's a lighter term. And you're going to attract more positive. Mm -hmm. And that is, everyone's witnessing that now. Everybody is witnessing this now. So it's like, if we can unpack all these things, what's happening with the expansion of reality through the timelines with all energy personalities, and it all falls back onto Seth. Right. Seth spoke all about this occurring and what we needed to do. So coming back, you off camera before you, when I asked you, or you may have said it on camera, I can't recall, I'm lost now. But, you know, he did a little prediction about future events. And I said, we already, we already did it. He did. But I right. want you. It was in the book, The Unknown Reality. Uh, which I'm sure I have a copy on the other side of that bookshelf, but I, to be able to find it, I'm so Don't sure. Don't worry about it. You can but, remember it. Yeah. Oh, he said that I believe the year was 2033, that if we didn't have our shit together by 2033, that the race itself wouldn't survive and we'd have to, you know, basically start the experiment over again. I think uh, he said um, up to around about 2033, something like that. Right. Be Which right. seemed a long time ago in 2004. I know, I know, I know. But it doesn't mean because there is, he did also expand upon there is no such thing as time. But for right. us to have a, an awareness doesn't mean, you know, it's subject to 2033. No, nothing. It, we're in flux um, as we create and the, the potentiality and possibilities of different timelines coming through and, and, and what's going to happen. I mean, it's, it, it's well, it's already happened. I'm sorry. It's already happened. I can't say. So, but I've got to add to that. That's my premise. That's my disclaimer. Um, is even though he saw when he said about 2033, 
he didn't give it as an exact date, as a prediction. Right. But on following, if we stayed on the timeline we were on, that's what would have happened. But right. not just me. There were many out there saying, we've done it. It's done. And I think recent shifts um, within consciousness and energy personalities where the beings are now in our timeline physically, I mean physically, then... Does that make sense to you? Have I worded that correctly? Yeah, that we've we've made the necessary adjustments. Uh, I mean, it's not to say that things aren't going to be turbulent. No. You know, you can't. Um, this is something else that I run across from from uh, hosting Rob's show a mm. couple times a month. Is that you know people think you're going to get to fourth density awareness and go through all this acceleration, and you're not going to get your hair mussed a little bit. You know, we're going to be going through a, quite a bumpy ride, I believe. And from a lot of the different channelers that I listen to, mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of and it's it's a natural self-correcting process. Absolutely. You know, because I mean, it, it's going to be um, apparently it's a major struggle just to have a, a, a society set up where people are allowed to mind their own business. Because <laughs> from my point of view, that is like the only thing that needs to happen. Everyone just needs to mind their own business as long as you're not hurting we say this constantly in America. This was the American ideal that we've mm -hmm. fallen very far from. But the ideal is that as long as you're not hurting anyone else, mm -hmm. particularly children and uh, and animals, you know, the helpless, particularly them, as long as you're not hurting anyone else, you should be able to do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I I firmly believe that. That's my credo. That's my mantra. Uh, that's that's to me. That's what a more perfect and more sane world would look like. And, and it's, it is, it, for the individual personality, it's achievable. Mm -hmm. It is personally achievable. Achieve, I can't talk now. Achievable. Um, if you if you wish to attract that, you can do that. But the changes have to go on within. And that's part of the Seth material. It is. Um, well, you, you're talking about timelines now. That's what I've made no secret about the fact that I have done my very best to cut adrift from society. Yes. And not participate. You know, so I know in my left ear center over here, gas prices are six dollars a gallon and you know, yeah. there's horrible stuff happening and yeah, yeah. rumors of war. But I don't care. You know, and there was a time that I used to think that I that was an irresponsible attitude that I should be involved. That's why for over six years I hosted a, a chat show where I was doing political hardball twenty four seven basically. Now I don't care. I don't want to know what's going on out there. It has nothing to do with me. Has yeah. nothing to do with me. It's not the collective I want to be a part in, a part of. So why should I? Why should I pay any attention to it? And my heart goes out to people that are caught up in it. But that's their choice. That's not the life I'm living. I mean, I think this is part of the teachings of all um, great, say, set energy personalities. Let's really try and hone this one in. Is you have a choice. Whatever you put your attention on, you will create. So, like me for. Um, a show host, yeah? Whatever I put my attention on that matters to me, I would attract that guest onto my show and share the information that's withheld within them. And then it will attract the viewers that need to watch the show. The ones that can't hear this yet will not watch this show. I'm aware of that. So I never look at ratings I never, you know, I'm not fussed about anything like that because I, I sort of have now this, under, and I'm limited understanding still like everyone else, understanding of how, you know, this, um, it is, I will say it's like the Harry Potter school of magic. We, we've we got the wands and how we now are playing with how to use it to manifest and create. Right. And it's by intention. And, for example, you said to um, me, Gloria, you know, I said before, I'm going to slow my life down and all the busy, busy, busy do it. And you've done it. You, you've still got busy, busy, but you really have poured it in and you have slowed down time. Right. And that's what I was telling you earlier, even though for, for, to bring the, the audience up to speed, what was going on was that I run a very successful private ATM company, those cash machines that you get money from. I guess they're called ATMs in the UK also. They are. They are. So I... Cash uh, points. We call them cash points. Cash points, right. I think I saw that on a Doctor Who episode or something. Yeah. But 
uh, I was busy. I was really, really busy and I couldn't slow down. And it was great because money, one of the things I'd been working on for a long time to manifest reality is I want to be filthy rich. Yeah. And so now it's just become kind of a game to me. Uh, and, and things are going so well. Every, every single month, my profits are up. And it's all thanks to creating reality. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. Just put it, living and breathing in th the world I want to inhabit. Once but you, you do put the guys who's listening, he does put the work, the effort, Oh, yeah. it. physical 24 7 he doesn't just sit there and manifest it he actually physically puts his self right. into it yeah right that's totally true and but i was running around i'm like i never have any time i don't want to have any time and so the last time as a result of talking to gloria she said well stop saying that and she's totally right so i say i have plenty of time i have leisurely amounts of time and i was talking about it doesn't have to be this way but what it seems to be in the human experience is when you're trying to manifest something, there's usually a time delay, you know, a week or a month or something, depending on your focus and circumstances. And so I started to notice how for a while I was still dealing, even though I had changed my mind, I was still dealing with this residual busyness and, and frenetic, frantic energy, yeah. uh, you know, but it has faded away and I'm still busy. I'm still running the company. But the type of busy I have doesn't feel or seem busy in any way. No, it's effortless. I get to it, right? It's I have effortless, effortless. Right. You, you know, it's it's it, it is. Um, I mean, I call it spell casting. If you say I did, we did. I you said I don't have enough time. I said stop saying that. I have enough time. And once it becomes part of you, you're basically doing the same thing, but it's effort less right and, and go on go on oh no it was you know it's money i know money is a sensitive topic because it just is and i hate to harp on it or you know how much i have or any of that but they say i, I want to i think this is helpful insight if there's anyone out there who wants to work with money in a better way with better energy uh when they say like the rich get richer and the poor get poorer and that sort of things i found for me it was just the comfortability of talking about money, whether or not I had it. I had a situation last weekend. I was waiting for $30,000 on Friday morning. It didn't come. That's money that I used to keep in my machine. It keeps yeah. circulating in my mach various machines. So it didn't come. I didn't really worry about it. I was, I was filling these couple high producing ATMs I had with cash with the money that I did have on hand. And the guy that owns the store, he's like, I've seen you here filling the machines a couple of times. I'm like, yeah, I didn't get my deposit. It'll be here Monday, but I'm doing the best I can. He's like, well, how much do you think you'd need? I'm like, oh, probably $12,000 will cover it. He's like, I said, probably $12,000. He's like, oh, I got that at my house. If you want to meet me at the store. I go. met him at the casually and he gave me 14. He's like, well, I have 14,000. So I just give you 14,000. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this is really great. You know, now it's not like it's my money or anything. It's going to help run the business more. Yeah. But it's because I wasn't, you know, years ago, $14,000 would have been a life ruining amount. Of yeah, money. It's, yeah. I mean, we can, we can take this analogy off the money. Okay. Right. And put it to every, any other aspect of your human experience. Exactly. And go with the flow where everything, it's not an illusion what all of the great um, sages have said, and I'm going to go back to Eckhart Tolle and Muji and, and the likes of Alan Watts and that, it is so simple and it, it is effortless. Right. And well, people say, how, how is it? it? We're just trying to give you a little breakdown here, how you can get into this by changing your linguistics. It's the linguistic... All right, quick 101. Every thought is a vibration in consciousness and creates. But when it's worded, it manif it's a manifestation. If you keep wording it like, I lack, I lack toilet roll or I lack sausage rolls, it doesn't really matter. The word lack, it comes back and goes, lack, okay, you ask for lack, here's lack. So this is just a, a very basic, simple, simplified analogy. So when you start changing the linguistics with and say for example i don't know say you want good health mm. say you're, you're going through some trauma um you need to get off the um i am sick or i am that you you start saying you can even say my body's healed my body's healing i'm feeling good i'm regenerating whatever terminology suits you right. 
And on that note, if if your body has something wrong with it, it's a message. It's not just it's, happened to be wrong. It's, no, it's a dis-ease. Right. Something needs to be shifted. And it's telling you reality is expanding. The timelines are moving in general. You need to now shift that away. You can't take disease into the future. Illusionary, I have you, but still we're staying on Homo sapiens sapien. You can't take that with you. You can't take all the social determinants with you. You can't take the idea you have about yourself with you. And all of this is all in the Seth material. It's all in the Alan Watts material. It's all in all the materials. Um, this is this is what I've noticed recently. It's happening even to human beings. I never even thought would wake up to this. Yeah, there have been some surprises in my life. Some wow. surprises that yeah. have popped. I'm like, wow, I didn't expect you to to get red pilled. You know, I feel I, people that I had counted among the lost. You know, I'm surprised. Uh, I won't mention any names. There's a few people I'm surprised. You don't that mention any names. You don't want to get sued by somebody. Um, no. Well, they would be relatives, you know. Yeah, but still, it, and, and I also, and, and someone's, you know, many when the groups that I teach, they say, well, this person, I say, never say never. If you'd seen me three decades ago, <laughs> drunk, uh, you know, whatever I was doing, I don't know what I was doing. There was no consideration. Never say never. Never. Right. It's, I'm so grateful to be where I am now. Well, I think, oh, fuck. how did I not know? I don't know. I mean, you, you talk about three decades ago. That was, was it 91? Oh, yeah, 92. 92. Um, I listen to Barbara Marciniak. She's another one of the channels that, that I listen to. She's not for everybody, but I, I resonate with her. And one of the things she was talking about was this kaleidoscoping period of time. If you were on the planet between 1988 and 2012, these are the markers that she gives. Mm. Like that's when everything was super, the super accelerated change. Yes. And I started thinking about it because I was on the planet from 1988 to 2012. Yeah. And it, it really like how world the different way. This is like, I believe we talked about this last time on the show, how proper everything had to be yes. in the 80s when you were like a television presenter. Because we were talking oh, about goodness. TV programs back in the 70s and 80s when they talked about paranormal stuff. It was always a coat and a tie and very yes. professorial and yes. measured and no you outrageous. Couldn't, you couldn't swear. You couldn't smoke. You couldn't go to the toilet. You, right. You, what we're doing here, you and I, would not be put on network television no, in 1988. No. No, and it's like we've you if you it's always hindsight because hindsight's a bitch. Right. If you do a reflection, you and I do in the groups a lot, do a reflection on your personal life, but if you do a ref, reflection on the collective, it's like we've been we've died and come back and died and come back and died and come back. We've been shifted from era to era to and we because obviously in truth we've experienced all things, all times, all places now. But you can really see this, the dip, the, and how how we've accelerated. Let's just say, all right, I wasn't alive in World War Two. I just want you to know that. All right, but going on my research, how humanity as the collective, you know, us theatre groups groupies here, you know, how we accelerated in such a short period of time. Considered to, in brackets, the historical evolution of Homo sapiens sapien. Notice I'm using illusionary in brackets. You can see just in that technology in itself advanced more. I reckon, in, I mean, I, it seems it used to be 50 years, 20 years. You can just go 10 years. Look where we come in 10 years in technology. Oh, and five years from now. No, that's the thing. Even though I wasn't alive in World War II either. But when you think about when we were younger, we were raised and taught and influenced by people, some of whom had been around before automobiles at our age. Yes. Yes. You know, that's, so. That was the social determinants. That right. was the ideas that we had about ourselves, trying to link on to the old conditioning of how to think, what to do, you are limited. Da, 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 da. Right. I mean, 
all right then let's 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 throw it out there at what point did humanity in it, it's when was it was it the internet i don't know when was it it snapped out from the old guys that used to still be around when we were kids because, i don't know go on oh well that's that's the thing i've made this analogy on several shows in my own life i went from having i had a literal wooden television and rotary phone were commonplace mm -hmm. to now i have a broadcast a television broadcasting studio on my desktop in yeah. my private you know, so it's just in our lifetime. I, I always tell people I'm the last of Generation X, which is true, being born in December of 81. Okay. You know, I'm just right at the cutoff. Okay. And um, in my lifetime, to go from black and white televisions was still common. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, we had color TV in the 80s, but yeah, not yeah. everybody had one. No, you know, no. Television remote controls were just becoming. Oh, common. I, I used to be, I used to be the fucking remote control, I'm telling you, for my family, my parents. Right. I mean, my parents had black and white, but my parents had very early color TV. I must remember that. Right. And they had one of the first house phones. I must remember that. Always had house phones and color TV. But I remember that. And usually oh. if people had two TVs. One of them was black and white. And yeah, was one was color. And right. there was only wooden cabinets. All right, we've, we've digressed slightly. We, we've we really them. haven't, though. This is human evolution. It is. It is. Now and there's now, an AI program running our whole lives that we don't even know, know about. Now it's, yeah, here we go. So now we're coming up to, we're, we're at this era, okay? We have slightly touched upon it, where the energy personalities, um, and I can go into more detail that if, if, if you want to, of how they're coming through, how they're coming in, okay, in our timeline, um, and how the expansion of reality is, you know, I don't fear what they, people call the AI, the A1. It's part of the theatre. Mm. It's part of what's supposed to be. Um, so there's, no, I don't find the technology that we've gone through as a negative thing or it's part of the whole no. experience. I think if you have a healthy awareness of it, you'll become yeah, immune to it. Absolutely. You know, I always say... It can I, take people like any drug. I've seen it. But, you can, but look at this way. You can have fire. You can use fire to heat water, feed your family, or you can burn yourself and burn a house down. Oh, it's I'm, I'm totally thing. with you on Technology, this. same thing. You know, whenever something comes in, no matter what it is, you can use it for what you perceive to be good or what you perceive. You have a choice. Right. So That's I why I said a healthy awareness. You know, healthy the... awareness. I don't fear AI. Um, you know, I do get a bit pissed off on the phone when the robot fucking talks to you, though. I must admit that I just put the phone down. If there's no human at the end, I don't want to know. Apart from, that, <laughs> apart from that. So I'm looking at now what we're all experiencing in this timeline now. Even though we're not on the same timeline. You adequately said it before, or perfectly said it before. We're two timelines crossing together. Now, where I want to take this is back on to Seth again. Mm -hmm. Did Seth mention, he did mention, but did you read anywhere in his material when he, like everyone was asking, when are they coming? The energy personality, when are they coming? You know? Well, he what never... What did he say? He never outright discussed disclosure, you know, space aliens directly. He he said that they exist in passing. Yeah. He never like inculcated people like you're going to have visitors from outer space and they're going to. It wasn't anything like that. It was always implied, if anything. Mm -hmm. um, I remember uh, another thing that Seth did was that he himself would channel a being known as Seth too. Yes. And go he, into that. Uh, Seth too blew my mind on the audio. I'm telling you. It was very like eerie that. reading it. It was coming from some other place. You could tell yes. that it was being brought in. That was the thing about the Seth books is that yeah. you can tell they're they're intruding on our reality. Yes. There's something very and I told you this last time, I know there have been people in my life that I would consider very they, they have an outstanding vocabulary people yeah. that I would consider far more literate than myself mm -hmm. like my grandmother and I gave her a copy of the Seth book which is essentially written on an eighth or ninth grade level there's no words in it that are really outrageous and she couldn't understand it she told me she couldn't comprehend it it made no sense to her even though she's far more literate than I was uh, she the, the something about the energy just would not let her mm -hmm. perceive it and I've seen that with the videotapes also. I've showed set people 
the videotape of Jane channeling and they can't, they're like, I don't understand what he's saying. It makes no well, sense. Well, I think it's, I don't know. I mean, I got to, the only thing I come back at that, we, you did digress there slightly, but never mind. Okay. I'll let you off. Is when um, I read the Seth material before and watched Jane Roberts, um, the, the, the original interviews mm -hmm. before when she did channeling as well, when I went back this time, I took something from it, obviously, because it, it kicked me on the path of self-realization, obviously mm -hmm. something. Um, but when I went back this time, I was ready for it. I right. was ready for the whole package. And I'm going to come back because you did digress off to Seth too. Right. That's what we were on about with Seth yeah. too. Tell us about, I mean, I when I would, because on the audio book, they would use different voices. So you could really distinguish. They would have. I've never heard it done through an audio book, but it was a very, you could feel the energy shift as yes. you were reading it. Yes. And that's how, uh, as a modern example, that's how Rob contacts Ardiff. Rob can't ca contact Ardiff directly. He channels, he connects with Treb, and Treb is acting like an intergalactic AT&T operator yeah, hooking Rob up with Ardiff. He, and, and that's how he channels all those other beings. Rob's channeled over 400 beings, if I remember mm -hmm. correctly. And they're all basically he has to connect to Treb first, if I'm not mistaken, to do and that. And that's with, from your knowing, your understanding, what can you tell me about Seth Two? What what came across to you? What was your experience with Seth Two? It seemed, um, actually, everything I'm going to tell you is gonna is gonna be paradoxical. I don't want it to. It wasn't. It wasn't bad but it was one of the creepiest experiences I've had in literature. It seemed unhuman, inhuman, otherworldly, yes. uh, but the, it, it was such a rich base of knowledge. Yes. It was like there had been a crack in reality in some way. And it was unsettling, but comforting yes. at the same time. I agree. I, and, I, no, I agree. I had to ask you first. When, when Seth II spoke, hmm. it was energy shift right like an energy i hadn't experienced it was unsettling but like an awe i was in awe and it's like i was so attentive to what right. was being said it's like my ears pricked up i went still and i listened and i felt this i can't explain it this you're not supposed to be here but since you're here i'm going to tell you the secrets of the universe yeah okay. i mean like boom and it was like all powerful that's so you know right. all powerful not higher than seth but i wouldn't mess with seth too <laughs> right and that well seth says there is no aspect of him that's not also you and i exactly you, know, you wouldn't be able to perceive him if we didn't have these aspects of exactly. ourselves exactly so that brings it full circle back this is a process of self realization mm -hmm. it depends what school of thought you've gone through um you know alan watts i am god well, you, are you not, I am every, God. It, it depends. But you can get the academic understanding of this. It's a realization as well. And Seth, too, really resonated with the realization part of me. It, I was listening to me. And that was the most unsettling thing ever. Does that resonate with you? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like I told you in the last program that we had done. Um, the best description I ever heard of the Seth material was that it was like we left it here for ourselves to find. Yes, yeah. So I mean, it was powerful. I recommend if you can't read books, uh, you know what? Going out and buying books today, it can be expensive. You can go on to YouTube. It's a big red sign on it, and it's Seth Speaks. There's 10 hours of that part, and you can right. go anywhere. There's a, guy, there's a guy that reads them. His name is Tim Hart Hart. Who does a really yes, good job? Yes, this guy. That's the guy. Yeah, I support. Yeah. I learned about him. Actually, I'm going to give Tim a shout out. I've never met the man, and I've only even listened to a couple of his videos. But I sent him five dollars a month because last year I stayed at the Seth house with Carolina, yeah. and mm -hmm. we slept in Jane Roberts' bed for like almost two weeks. We hung out there, yeah. and I, I have to give this pitch again, uh, guys. If you look at the Seth house. There are these two wonderful women, Kate and Oshara, that have just purchased it, and they're going to. They're re in the process of revamping it, and they're going to make it a Seth Museum uh, slash teaching institute. Rob is hoping to do a channel panel there at some point in the future when, when things align for that, that's going to happen. But they told me that that's who they listen to 
when they want to get their audio chef is Tim he, Hart. Uh, and I've listened to a couple, but he has done brilliant. He the has old- done. He, he, I mean, there was another one I listened to, and I can't remember the name. And there's three actors. That was for Seth Speaks. I listened to the other books with Mr. Hart Hart. I listened to them on the other books. Um, and uh, But the, the Seth Speaks, I did another um, narrator. There was three of them. Um, right. Well, Tim is good. And people should know if, you, if you're going into the Seth book, if you actually read the book, Jane's husband is Rob. Jane is channeling Seth, and she's married to a guy named Rob. And as Rob is, the way that the books were produced is such, uh, Jane would go into a trance, and while she was speaking for Seth, her husband would take down the notes in shorthand, and then he would type them up. Very meticulous, tedious work. And I personally believe the audiobooks are great, but if you're interested in the phenomena of channeling, Rob's notes are indispensable. Yeah, I no, I'm in total agreement, but I am saying, because this is for everybody, if you're, you know, financially, it's not so you can spend out on. If you can't, you're never denied. Right. If I can get a free audio book online, do you think I'm going to go and buy it? I don't also, think so. Also, libraries are a thing, too. Yeah, so it, it, can, libraries as well. Wonderful libraries in the UK. But there, are, but there are many people that can't get out to libraries. This is what I'm looking at, the collective. and Or can't go to a bookstore, or can't buy a book, or don't shop on Amazon, all of that. Then you you go onto YouTube and you can get Seth material audio. Oh, but there's no shortage of it, and that's the resurgence we're talking about to bring even that back. Yeah, uh, it's a, oh, and before every time you mention Alan Watts, I I have to say there are other people almost too numberless, uh, too numerous to to mention them all. Obviously, but Jonathan Livingston Siegel by Richard Bach is a fantastic mm-hmm. metaphysical book. Anything, just about anything by Herman Hesse. If you look, yeah, Demian, yeah. a Siddhartha, Steppenwolf, mm-hmm. all great books that uh, essentially they're stories. But if you have a perceptive mind, you see them much more than that. I agree. I mean, as I said, not every one way suits all, not one hat fits all. So, you know, you may not resonate with something that I listen to or. You know, as we said, you've said some people, you showed them the Jane Roberts um, videos of her, you know, channeling and talking. It just and, goes over their head. They don't over get it. Head. Well, maybe they need it like Alan Watts with music, like your daughter's getting. Uh, Alan Watts is the same as Seth. Right. He just, he become it. Yeah. Well, that's why I mentioned Richard Bach, Jonathan Livingston. Yeah. It's a children's book. I would highly recommend. Rob finally finished it. I mailed it to him like two years ago and he messaged me like a week ago and said he finally finished it. But, I mean, there are many avenues. There are many, there are many avenues to the same thing. So just well, since we're talking, so sure. since we're talking about energy personality essences, I think it would be appropriate also to talk about Robert Monroe, mm-hmm. uh, which is how Rob learned how to channel Treb yeah. and Arnold was through the yeah, Gateway yeah. Bridge. And if you do some of those exercises, Robert Monroe has in there. He has a wonderful voice for this. He mm-hmm. his voice is the one that you hear during the exercises, and it's mm-hmm. just so perfect. Uh, I hope he meets me when I die. Like I would. Like, <laughs> I keep asking. No, I keep asking. I hope Alan Watts is there when I go. <laughs> well, you'll get him too. But Robert Robert Monroe just seems like the perfect after death guide. Mm-hmm. But it, it um, he has an exercise where he talks about making yourself bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger than yeah. the, so you're holding the planet in your hand and then the whole solar system and the galaxy mm-hmm. to connect with this higher energy personality yeah. essence version of yourself. So those are very powerful exercises. And you feel it when you do it. If you go into these exercises wholeheartedly with an open mind, you can achieve it. It's 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 another excellent path to travel on whatever one presses your buttons. I'm aware of the Monroe Institute and all of that back in the day, but that wasn't the one that got me. It wasn't. It it was Seth Material right. and Alan Watts. Then um Eckhart Tolle were born um, and others like that. And it was coming from every direction, but it was, I could never shift. I never knew what a channeler was, even though I was watching Jane Roberts and the, had the material. I never, I couldn't cognitively get what a channeler was because I'm a medium. Remember, I didn't know I was having ET experiences until 1987. I thought they were dead midgets and someday people looked, 
had big black eyes. I wasn't in my reality. So it wasn't till later on. And when I really, this is, this is how, if you're not ready, you're not ready. And I'd done all the Jane Roberts, I'd done all the Seth. I'd heard of this guy, Basher, listened, nothing. I listened to um, him talk, no, nothing. Didn't like it. Went on to Guy TV, yeah. I decided for some reason to, I've unsubscribed now, but way back I decided to subscribe to Guy TV. And Ruben Landon had this um, series on the, the channel. And I thought, oh, and I listened. And no, 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 this channel is a load of bollocks here. Yeah? And then Rob goes here, come up. Right. And I, there was two, I said it before, I'll say it again. There's two parts to each one. They'd interview the the, the person, the, the identity, then they would channel. Mm. With Rob's, for some reason, I went straight, straight to channeling, Treb. And Rob and I listened, and Rom, I was in, and that's my introduction to channeling was Treb. And now everyone knows why I love him so much. And soon I'm going to be wearing the T-shirt. If you yes, do. very soon, As coming out tomorrow. And I hopefully when I interview Rob soon, I'll have the T-shirt on. Then I got it. So I'm saying you can go all, and we're trying to show all different paths to this. I mean, then I got the channel in, but it was through Rob Gauthier that I got the channel in. It's Not amazing how Rob dense Rob we can be. Roberts. Say that again. I didn't get the, the concept of channeling, not even from Jane Roberts. Oh, right. No, that's what I was saying is how, how dense we can be. Yes. That I knew that Jane Roberts was channeling, and it never occurred to me that there was anybody else channeling. Like yeah, I, there you go. Yeah, I thought um, channeling was something that popped up once or twice in a generation. I listened to Bashar. No. No, it's kind of rubbish. I listened to I listened to what Seth was saying. It resonated, mm -hmm. but I didn't understand the concept or the context it was in of channeling. Not well, until I went and listened to Rob. No, it's and Rob is so. Yeah, Rob is going to do important things that he and not that he hasn't already. He's but gonna, I, he's Rob is going to go somewhere. And he's still just, a rising star. At he's this point. he's just about to. It, I know because we're working on that program, the Onira Knot, yeah, and uh, just various other things that have been happening behind the scenes. So, okay, let's 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 go back now. So, how do you feel? You've obviously had um, ET experiences yourself. Mm -hmm. How do you f yourself personally? Can you see the difference in the contact modalities of these energy personalities? Um, I personally can, but can you see the difference in how it works now? Well, I, you know, when I was younger, I had these, uh, again, like a better words, abduction experiences that we're right. talking about. And it was, um, I've tried to revisit these things. You know, you know, you never know as you age, if, if you're seeing things differently or if your mind is altering what happened and at some point it doesn't even really matter, <coughs> but they, uh, it was a lot more violent when I was younger, a lot more scary. And now I had forgot for a number of years, I didn't really have anything. You know, occasionally I'd have a dream where I'd kind of feel the alien energy around, but that was, you know, that was basically it. Of course, I was a drunk for many years too. Mm -hmm. But just in this past year, I've been having dreams where the graves are there and they're just kind of like it's like they're on the outskirts of my dream, like waiting, yeah. waiting to receive me rather than intruding. Yeah. If that makes yeah. any sense. So I've noticed that change. I like the latter part of it. I mean, I've noticed um, it's a totally different contact modality. Like we've gone through years of like co-creating for things to happen mm -hmm. between the, even though at one point I was totally unaware until it's like talking to me like I'm talking to you now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like literally it's like that totally different communication modality um at one point way back in the day you couldn't tell if it was you talking or someone else talking or that this is just um you know the distinction between the two and whether it's what you wish for i remember saying where are you because i i was made aware of how they would come in 
kind of let me just try and pull back a bit here. You have to have the polarities, okay? Between for us to experience something, we need a polarity of it. I anyway I can do it. Um, over recent years, in in the illusion, people are picking up that as they come in, uh, the the governments in the role of government play are attacking them. Okay, this is happening in in this illusion it's part of it it's really is part of it and it is going on and it's been it's been going on for some time um in what we call the space area of this planet the matrix that we're in it, it is has been happening and their technology is 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 con the, the craft now is um self-conscious it the craft is the is the energy personality, so to speak. Yeah, mm. and they have got superseded quantum physics and everything else you can think of. However, the polarity here of energy personalities has such advanced technology. They can let's just try and make this simple, boy. They can sense when they're coming into the dimension, our frequency, and they're there waiting for them to attack. Mm -hmm. So this is something that's not just coming from me and I'm aware of. I'm starting to pick it up from other people. I'm watching other podcasts and it's just popping out. I think, ah, oh, yeah, I'm aware of that. And then someone says, is anyone aware of it? And ah, they're aware. So there's the modality changing there, okay? Also, I was made aware years ago how they would come in. and They've always been here, but you're physically literally be aware now you've spoken about seeing people that you know are they dead are they zombies mm -hmm. it, that could be some but these ones and i had them a couple of weeks ago and i had a witness thank god and i shared it i had michael feely on my show and i shared it these this was not a human being it was not a walking dead it wasn't an ai it was an energy personality dressed it, it, the dress was out of place. <laughs> it wasn't for this era. And it was too perfect. And it's anemic white skin. And I can't even. And what it could do blew me away. And I'm an experiencer. Well, you think nothing would go, wow, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. And blew my friend out who witnessed it too. And what they actually did. I'm not the only one that's experienced that. I'm hearing it more and more. So for me, the energy modality of contact has changed as well. Mm -hmm. It's no no more nuts and bolts and 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 all the rest. It is definitely. How can I put it? It's as if the some of the timelines have literally merged, and you know, like you would get a mandala effect, mm -hmm. yeah. There's any way I can think, but they're crossing in. But their science and and their dimensional frequency is still so different, but somehow they're blending it in with our 3D. I can't explain this shit. Well, Seth has a uh, – this is something I was going to talk about earlier that we, we, we seem to always get derailed, but come right back to it. Um, he says that the real goal for uh, – if you're, if you're doing what we're doing – Self-development, yeah. metaphysics, getting better at creating reality. The the penultimate goal of all of this is to become what's called a dream art scientist. This is a very specific set of words that he picked out, that you're going to be a dream art scientist. That you create reality through a – there's basically no division between the real world – I'm using these terms now – the yeah. waking world and the dream world, and yeah. that by dipping into – he calls these framework one and framework two. Yeah. So you and I are here in the physical concrete world, this framework one, mm -hmm. and there's an unseen reality that's basically a mirror version of this world where po probabilities are constantly being churned out based yeah. on how much energy is put into uh -huh. them by your, uh -huh. your psyche. So uh, to become a dream art scientist, you would operate seamlessly between framework one and two. Yes. Uh, and, and so I figured that word might be a word that you're looking for because that's the one Seth comes up with. That sounds, thank you so much indeed. That sounds better than what I was trying to articulate. And that's what's been happening 
more and more the last three months since I had contact. There was contact. Um, How long ago was our last show? I don't even remember. That's the thing with time. I, I don't know. even damn I, mean, I think was, it was last month somewhere. I don't know. I, don't, I have no idea. I have no idea. So that's what I'm experiencing now. Now. Um, and and it's like a knowing before that experience happened when i got up in the morning it was just it was just knowing they're going to be there and i was traveling somewhere else with a friend to another part of the buckinghamshire countryside mm -hmm. and then i forgot i had that experience it was like vroom, it's normal you like wipe let's not go there and even though there was helicopters up there. It, it still, I didn't recall the experience earlier on. It's how it works with me, you know, because maybe because my personality, what I'm like, you know. Um, and then when I experience the being, do things that go totally against the law of Newtonian physics and probabilities. And and it, it was it was like the quantum world, vroom, vroom, moving distances from, I'm in a car traveling, they're walking, oh, so they say, and when I get to my, from A to B, driving by a car, when I get out the car, they're there. Fucking can't do that. Mm -hmm. Can't do that, yeah? And it was like, so it, you just said it, and you're going to have to say it again because I've totally forgotten what you said, how the two come in together and it worked. It was, for me, talk about a paradigm shift gone. <laughs> I, I, can never be the same I was before that day. And that was about three weeks ago. Right. Yeah. It's, um, I don't know. What's the best way to go. Think, things are becoming so, so slippery. Like time is another example. You know, or what, what just happened to you. I can't even keep up with time anymore. No. And I, I feel like it's when I have my sister, actually, I bought a planner for my sister and whenever I'm doing anything, I send her a voice message to say, Valerie, I'm doing this today. And she keeps track of my time for me because I wouldn't actually do it. And I know there's something to be said about, you know, human beings are creatures of habit. There's something to be said for routine. Mm, not with me. But I think that. Um, you see think, this? This is mm. how I do time. Everything. And sticky notes. Right. If a well, thought comes in, I have to write it and stick it because it doesn't exist. Well, I know when I was punching a clock for a living, mm. there's something about that rigid structure that keeps you trapped in a state of mind. You know, like you, that you, it, it's hard to escape just from that. If you're doing a nine to five somewhere, um, I don't know how to better explain it. But just by uh, adhering to that structure, it keeps yeah. you locked in a lower, from my point of view, a lower vibration. It, 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 I mean, again, I mean, I'm going to pull it back to Seth as I can't not pull it back to Seth. What I witnessed with this being wouldn't allow me to see its face. Mm -hmm. It moved like, and it was dressed out of era. It was that noticeable. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they get their act together and get up-to-date clothing. It was like it was from the 80s or something. Um, and it was too pristine. Everything was perfectly, perfectly. But, and my friend witnessed this with me. To see, if you're perceiving a being, yeah, mm -hmm. and it's at point A, when you pass it in a car and when you drive a distance up a hill and you get to point B and I'm get out the car and I'm stood there and then she walks past me and I felt it. And that you're, you're dumbfounded. No mm. matter how many times I've experienced ET, you call them ET energy, but no matter how times I've been on a craft, no matter what I've experienced, visions and all the things I thought I knew and all self-realization and all the process and all the books and all the res out the window. It is a shattering. It's like the hologram has just gone thump, like that. Did, the, did this person, did this being notice you? This being read me. All right, let me give you an example. When we, we were driving up this hill, okay, one way, and it had little lay-bys, um, so if a car come down, they you, one would wait on either side. And to get to the very top, very high, yeah? And it was it was like an ascent like that. Mm -hmm. And we are going up, and my friend was driving, and I could see what presumed to, to look like a female was. 
had long white hair, like an 80s shell suit white. And being a medium, I read every energy that goes past me. I can't help it, yeah? And I, I said to my friend, what is that? That was the first thing. And it was moving. It portrayed a female, but it didn't move like a female. One, its arms were down. It did have some sort of bottle vessel in one. And it was walking up, but not walking. It was like it was gliding up. There was nothing female. And as my friend pulled up, I thought, I'm going to look at the face. I knew something wasn't right. And I bent down to look, and she had her hair down. She dropped the head down. I couldn't catch the face. And I said to my friend, that's not human. And I, I just sensed because I've experienced energy personalities from other dimensions before, I know the sense of not being human. We drove all the way up, vroom, 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 all the way to the top, boom, over to a churchyard, because I went to show her this dodecahedron gravestone, which is weird in itself, and another story. Mm -hmm. I stood on, I got out of the car, stood on the path, my friend went over, this being come behind me. She couldn't have got there that quick. I turned as she went by, and her head went down again, the long white hair. She walked down a bit. I crossed over to the graveyard to my friend. I didn't want to shout, fuck, you know. I calmly, tripping over graves as you do. She stood at the bottom of the graveyard. Me and my friend could see her, and she was stood by a monument, and she was watching, just stood still. Not until we crossed back onto the path, she moved. She came off the path, she walked across the field and disappeared in the forest. That's not enough. I knew then it was a being that was watching me. Then I remembered what I experienced in the morning. I turned around and said to my friend, I'll tell you what, when we go back down the hill on that road, if she's down the bottom, that validates it for me. I, I can't question it, all right? We finish what we were doing. We drive all the way down the hill. There's like a, a thing, the road and a little off path. Fuck me, she was walking down. There she was again. So we drive off to go, it's like a little village. And by then, I'm like, something's just happened. And my friend said, she was watching you as if you, to make sure you did something. She picked up that. I said, I don't know. As we're driving out of this little village, I opened my mouth and said to my friend, now we look left. I looked left and there she was again in the street. Boom. That was that. I get back to my village here and I'm telling you, I'm in this house and I knew she was here. Now, that's not a one-off for me, but this was the most powerful. What I was showing what we would label their science People say that you have to raise your frequency. I I may be what you call self-realized, but I ain't that high. I'm not no Alan Watts guys, yeah? I know what I am. I know. My frequency, you know, this is another thing we've got to address as well, how we use labels and we limit ourselves to our frequency. That happened to me. And it happened to my friend who's a medium. She witnessed it. She that's, witnessed it and knew it was for me. That's weird. I had a situation. Actually, I hadn't thought about this until just now at this very moment. The other night, I don't get creeped out or anything, I, you know, because I live out in the country and I'm used to walking through the dark at night. And, uh, But uh, it just felt like I was being stalked by something this whole night. Like, everywhere I went, I couldn't tell you how happy I was to get back inside and lock the door. It just, this was probably... There you go. Do you know how many people tell me that in the groups? I don't know. Maybe like four days ago, three, four days. Them. Someone, yes. I just kept felt like I, I couldn't shake it. You know, and I carry. You know, I live in the country. I carry a pistol because um, we got bear and you know, there's mountain lions and stuff. There's stuff that will eat you in my neighborhood. Yeah. You know, but and um. And you, but you don't eat people, do you, William? No, no. no. But you know that. <laughs> Coming across, like sometimes you'll feel that there's deer in the area or other living creatures, 
that's one feeling. Whatever this was, was not natural. It was preternatural. It was uh, supernatural. Yeah. It was not, it was like a presence that was around me. It's not like it was something coming yeah. from the bushes. It was something that was not wholesome. And yeah. I don't usually feel that way. So it stuck out to me. I feel totally, uh, basically. However, I'm gonna jump, I'm gonna jump in. This is what I teach in the groups. Um, that, how you sensed it for something like that, a new experience to come in, your belief system, your condition, everything's going to come in that you know, your perceptions are going to come in. And working on that, because it's a strange energy, it's like if you went and you went into a room, sometimes you can meet someone and you, you really don't like them at first because their energy is so different. But once you get to know them, they're okay. Many in the groups, because they've been, I've been working with them the last couple of years and things are they're coming in. And they're now, now they can say, um, yeah, I was being watched and I felt the presence. And now they're seeing what they call blue beings. They're seeing energy. It's energy. It's blue. They're seeing this energy first. And things are, and so, but the, the first, I, I don't know if this is the case of you. I don't know experience. It's your personal experience. But what I'm hearing, and I've experienced it as well, it's like someone's watching. Mediums pick it up all the time. It's not spirit. It's something different. But yes, it's it's the beginning of something similar like that. But even my friend who was with me, the medium, said she knew they were watching you, but they wanted you to see them watching you that you did you did something today that shifted something. And it, I think it could have been to do with a dodecahedron, like this big gravestone. Um, but we were but I had a witness. I had a witness which made such a difference. Yeah, it's, I don't know. So when you were talking about people seeing these blue lights, the next logical step is that as their frequency changes, they might be solidifying into beings. Yeah. You know, it's just the precursor. It's always, been there. it's always been there. I mean, it's always around us, isn't it? I mean, we have slightly digressed again, and it was. I went on to that. What but have we, though? Know, we're having I a good time. Something and they're not being released yet. Prior to this being, we took pictures. Well, my friend took pictures on her phone. Um, so we took these pictures. And then as the being, this woman was walking away, going into a forest. And what, a friend of mine said, why didn't you follow her? I said, you fucking mad. No way would I follow her. Yeah. Into the forest. I shouted to my friend, we can take pictures. And she started snapping. When the we, we took the pictures, then we totally forgot about the pictures. <laughs> how about this? Yeah, th this is how it works with me always. And then we went to a, a, a mausoleum. We went up there. We were posing. You know, da, da, da. totally forgot about that. Mm -hmm. As if you would. It's supposed to be a big thing. No, it's not. It's like, oh, can't. We took pictures. So we had a sh pictures from bef before, pictures of, of the being, and then pictures us posing on the mausoleum on top of the hill. And the landscape was just fantastic. Then we, we totally forgot about, when we left the village, we forgot about her. We come back to my place. We go in my back garden, sunshine, and totally forgot about her and the pictures. Who would forget, you'd think, yeah? Actually, you know, this reminds me of a time I had a professor when I was in college that I became really good friends with, like really good friends. And he ended up dying in 2017, I think it was. And it turned out that I was basically his only friend, which was really kind of sad. Oh. But it was incumbent upon me. His family uh, let me clean out his apartment, for, you know, if there was anything I wanted. Uh. And I was there with this girl. Um, the building is, is antique. Like it, it used to be a reformatory school for girls. Lots of very heavy energy. The mm. building had always been creepy, but his particular apartment, his condominium, was always great. But after he died, as I was in there, the more of his stuff that we came out, this darker and darker energy started taking over, like reclaiming the, the, the condo after he wasn't there anymore. And my girlfriend sits down in his rocking chair and starts spontaneously channeling messages from him about what needs to be done and everything. Mm -hmm. Totally takes over her body. 
Um, there's a, we got all these creepy photographs. There's um, yeah, there's no there's no doubt that the place has a bad history. And mm -hmm. the more stuff we take out of the building that has his energy attached to it, the creepier the room starts getting. Like I said, it's like yeah. being reclaimed by this horrible right. energy. And uh, it was this whole thing. We were going to investigate it and look into it. Totally forgot about it. Yeah. It's like it never even happened. Went back to normal as if she wasn't like involuntarily possessed and forced to channel. It's 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 you know? amazing how common this is. I mean, it wasn't until I sat in the garden later on and I said, Oh, let's have a look at them pictures. Like nothing. Mm -hmm. The pictures, you can't see a human being. You see white light in a shape. The pictures before perfect human beings, the pictures of her, white light. The pictures after of me and others, all on one camera roll, perfect. Her ones, light. Did you use an actual camera, like with film? She used her phone. Oh, okay. Well, you said so a camera click, roll. You're going click, 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 graveyard. You're looking at the grave. Click, 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 her. Click, click, mausoleum and us posing. All just, and then we forgot. All pictures come out perfect. She come out as pure white energy. Now, I looked at, the, I can't even look at them again. <laughs> and then you forget about it. Right. It's, it's weird. Like, that's what I'm saying. We were, we had this super paranormal experience in this condominium. And do you what? It, and no, I keep fun. hearing people saying, I've got some secret to tell you. I saw a UFO. Well, you know, and you're like, nah. And every, do you know how many, I've got to tell you, in the how long I've been here, the amount of contact of what you call abductions and things I've witnessed, I don't know unless someone asks me. No, and that I'm finding weird. But however, I think with what's happening now, it's going to become so normal, there is not going to be that human response. Have I just made sense to you? It's right. going to be normalized that there right. is no, you know, if I met if I met you in the in the shopping center and I hadn't seen you in five years and whatever, I don't know, and then I'll be, oh yeah, William, da, 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 then I'll forget about you later on. It's gonna be a bit like that. Does that make sense? Right. Like the, the so that the shock to our system will be non existent when these beings exactly. Start so when so when when in the play and a lot um, Seth does talk about you need to up your shit before the mm. time he gave. When it does happen, you're the shock is going to be too fucking much because well, the physical body is consciousness, is, it's got to catch up with the being. It's got to. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, well, that's why I think that, um, it's as always, it's always with the kids. I mean, think about people as as more people. The only way that any change ever happens is as old people die. Like yeah. that's really how social change happens. Mm. Uh, so uh, another, you know, the newer people are going to be more and more accustomed to this. It'll they're be going to be open to it. They're going to be like, yes, yeah, cool. They're not, and I, and but the maturer ones, like me, <laughs> playing the role of Gloria with the braids, um, obviously. I understand now why I'm having years ago, I would have gone, well, I got to tell all my friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's nothing. I had another one this morning. I knew they were there. I did tell my group what happened and something said film. And I did a bit of filming and then I took a few pictures. Couldn't see because the sun is we've got a heat wave over here at the moment. And then I went inside, looked at the video, and I could see this blue haze. Vroom, 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 vroom. And then I looked at the pictures, and I could see spirals of blue. And I went, wow. And I just sent it. So it was, look what happened. Because we talk about manifesting, yeah? Mm. And then uh, I, I sat there, and I just looked up. I was waiting for friends to come. And I said, I haven't seen one of you in the sky for years. I'm sick of hearing about this. Boom! This white light went out and in. Like that, I went, fuck, I was giggling. I was, and I'm not the only one. So this is why when I brought in Seth and when I talked to Rob um, soon on the, on the phenomena of, of Seth, 
is so its resurgence is because it's so needed now. Right. So by the time these kids that are five years old get to be 40 years old. They were, well, it would happen. It's done before that. But well, I'm right. talking about your daughter's age, my children's age. The, I mean, you know, the, the, the ones, the kids now that are, are, are so, you know, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, fine. I mean, my son just says, yeah, yeah, mom, it's fine. Mm. It's cool. Yeah, I've seen them. I've experienced them. And it's like nothing is no big deal. And this is for the maturer ones. It, it's becoming like that as well. I mean, look at Rob. He channels. I actually am in love with Treb. You just need to know this. It's a bit sad, one dimension to another. But um, anyway, who would have thought I would have fallen in love with a reptilian? But there you go. Um, it's like Rob. Hey. Okay? What? A tail, it's a tale as old as time. It's a beauty you know, and the difference. If you if you look at the relationship between at the beginning when Rob started channeling channeling Trep and how he felt about it. now look at him now. It's like one and same thing. It's a one and same thing now. It's so normal for him. It's so innate. It's so natural. It's not I mean, when I talk to Rob as in Rob. There's no difference between Rob and Treb for me now. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, from, from Treb's explanation, Treb is a potential future version of Rob anyway. Well, there you go. But this is the shift in perception. This is expanding the reality. Sh and you said, what did you say earlier on, how the two timelines come together that Seth said better than I did? I don't know. That we just... Um... I don't know that you and I have just crossed timelines, basically. Yeah, you we've know. crossed. We are crossing timelines, but the timelines that Seth spoke about, it's about the science, the science that you said something about. A dream art scientist. Yeah, co uh, cr creators um, mm. for using imagination and and the science together to. I've lost it. I can't remember what you said earlier, and you quoted Seth, and I've lost it. Me too. Yeah. Well, forget about it. We'll let that one go. But you can see where these three areas that we spoke about tonight are so relevant with Seth. Um, and I'll keep shouting out Seth. Before um, we end, go on. Okay. Oh, no. no okay. Well, now I've lost what the hell I was going to What was I, I going to say? Just... Um, I don't know. I, basically something about how um, one of the realizations I've had personally is that one of, from based on who I am as a person, one of the core characteristics of me is I'm an absolutist when it comes to individual liberty. I'm an, yeah. I'm an extremist when it comes to individual liberty. And so growing up, I have had, we'll call them enemies. And my enemies have been basically any social system that exists that seeks to control other people. The legal and judicial system, the, the college and public school systems, um, various aspects of government, uh, re organization, religious organizations. And they're starting to crumble away. You know, yeah. whatever's happening in the world, like these institutions are getting less and less power. And even though it may seem to some people that society is collapsing and the world is collapsing, it occurred to me that I never really did that well in the old world anyway. No. So as the new world comes in, I'm bound to do better and better. So um, for me, the world I would like to see is one that maximizes individual liberty, minimizes external controls from these legacy organizations that think that they run the planet mm -hmm. and um you know that's that's why i'd like to head i mean for me i'm so looking forward to the experience remember i manifest my realities if you're in it watch out i've seen it i've been shown it in many visions from them of what's coming possible potentiality of of what could come um in my timeline mm -hmm. okay and uh I just see a total interaction um, where I don't know what terminologies to use it, but where the two timelines cross from their, their dimension, whatever number you want to give their dimension is fine by me. It's irrelevant to me. And we interact them. I don't interact on an energetic or um, a dream state consciousness or anything like that. It's through the 3D, which is happening now. Mm -hmm. That is like, what the fuck? It's like, wow, it's magic. 
because uh, it's you just don't know what's coming but it's just magic and it's for it i used to think i was living life mm -hmm. and now i know i am life expressing becoming the greater and grander version of myself looking that from brandon thomas and he nicked it from neil donald walsh but anyway i got it you're not going to plagiarize this i'm finding this still have challenges mm -hmm. a lot of health challenges have kicked in since this has happened big time a lot of health challenges on the physical body have hit the body really hard since this happened and i'm just presuming it's part of what's happening that the body's getting affected by it it's that powerful that powerful so i'm looking forward to it <laughs> right well i mean as long as you address those issues you'll be you know like when i have medical problems when i work through them i notice that uh it corresponds with working through some emotional problem in my yes. life i mean some i've already had my eyeballs checked out and scanned and you know there's no brain tumors there's no high blood pressure there's no diabetes I'm, you know i'm tomorrow they're going inside the ears um you know i'm doing my bit just to ensure that i'm you know as i'm going along because it stopped me it, it stopped me moving hmm. um i was told not to go um not by humans and it, a shift was that since the contact you i was i was shifted to another time i don't know why and i don't need to know why i don't analyze it so i'm just the major health checks come in and like boom 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 so i'm following procedure you know had it all got a nice picture of my eyeball i have you know <laughs> I, well come on i said to the guy can i take a picture of my eyeball he said of course i said because we never see our own eyes do we right i mean not the this outside the actual there's a complete scan proper photograph of my eyeball and it's like the sun it's beautiful it's just I'm, i was blown away that i possessed this thing um it was just amazing so yeah and tomorrow i'll be inner ears hearing everything balance because the balance is gone that's what's gone is the balance hmm. something it just hit me so hard it shook the physical body the experience i've been like that so i'm trying to it does i've got to do things differently at the moment well i'm sure there's some symbolism there to be determined or figured out as you go well i'm just going with the flow because the experiences are so great i can't tell you the joy it there's a joy and bliss of when you get self-realization that's one joy and bliss there's a joy and bliss when Treb come, and I do sense Treb now and again. Mm -hmm. It's this laughter and joy, and I hear him. That's it. But this joy that's happened is nothing. It's like I've never, when it they come in. This is like, oh, and yeah. So I'm not really concerned about the physical body. Um, I'm having to change the way I, because it caused so many tones and everything and imbalance for me to go dizzy i'm trying to get this out here so check your eyeballs da, da, da. then tomorrow get the ears da, da, da. and but i'm having to move in a, and walk in a different way at the moment as it start, it's starting to calm down because it was a shock to the system and i met that being a couple of weeks ago who went straight past me hello i'm not surprised so energy touching energy you've got to think about it you said that you when you and your your girlfriend went to that house and that energy come in and touched you and it can touch you well imagine if you get in this type of beautiful um energy personality really touching you it's going to hit the physical body i know i've been um re-examining what had happened to me the other night because i never occurred to me I had forgotten all about it. Like something was like, I don't want to say it was stalking me, but it was mm. just present. It was omnipresent mm. and I had no idea what was going on. It never occurred to me that it was some kind of visitation because just my, my radar was so off about it. I mean, you're not the only one. I mean, many mediums, um, you know, when I talk to them about the sh shadow beings, they think, always think it's spirit until I talk to them. I say, you can, you can, when a spirit, if you're a medium, when spirit comes in, I will automatically know male or female. 
the energy, it, 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 you can't miss that. Basic 101 mediumship. Once you get it, you know. When these beings come in, there's no male or female. Maybe sometimes you'll get a, a feminine and sometimes later on you can pick up. But there really is a neutral and it's an energy that starts off coming in for those that are not used to it. It's like a bit anxious, nervous, not scared, but it's in the tummy solar plexus or you feel it behind you. You know, it's almost like that. Um, and that's how it starts off until your perception changes. And when you open up to it, it's not a dark energy. There's no such thing as negative beings. It's all consciousness playing the role. So there is, um, in the role play, negative Nellies, yeah? But they don't fear them, so to speak. That's what I'm trying to say. It's part of the theatre that Seth talks about. The stage, Shakespeare, it's part of it. And when you shift your perception, and what happens if you've got a being, like you said, you felt someone watching you if you have any belief systems or fears inside that you haven't worked on it, you'll react that way to it you're blocked there you go same with mediumship with spirits but once you shift your perception and don't question it don't pull back the fear and just allow it and then gently like the girls in the group are now seeing energy beings in blue they're catching photographs one of red energy oh my god beautiful in the garden the young child took that picture the next generation took she took the picture for her mum who's a medium and showed her mum and her mum shared it with me children mm. so because they're coming they're different they're, they haven't got the belief systems like the old people we had but if you what you're experiencing now you've got to change shift your perception you're fearing something if you're feeling there's a difference between um, natural organic fear. Like, for example, if you come chasing me with a machete, I'm going to be shit scared and fearful, and I'm going to fear for my life. That's natural fear, yeah? Right. But the fear that's put on these, that fear comes from religion. That is implanted. Demons, devils, and all, all that rubbish. It's in, And it's... It's so deep in the subconscious, we don't know we got it. Mm -hmm. Okay? And it's a natural thing. Um, how, how you work on it is different for every individual person. However, just by next time that happens, go, remember what we spoke about? Okay. I mean, it could be an arsehole being. If it's an arsehole being, you just tell it to go. You, you don't ever swear at it. But, you know, you, you, I don't want to know. You just push it away and it can't. You are total control. Nothing. You are, you are this divine multidimensional being. Nothing is more powerful than you and all is you. So why would you fear? Does, does that make sense? Depends. Makes depends total sense. Yeah, it depends where you're coming from on your path. But where you are, if you have this understanding, especially from the Seth material, there's no higher or lower understanding. And you have an idea that you are this multidimensional being. You are this entity, yeah, that he speaks of, or this soul, and you are it, and that is it. And like Treb is a different version of, of um, Rob. You can't fit. Why would you fear that? The fear is a belief system. When you start to, the fears start to dissipate, you actually, they start to appear. It's part of, of the... The play, they will start to appear as who they are. They will then, but you, you, um, you, you can't get that far until you start to look at you first, not them. You, why am I reacting to this? I'm not saying there aren't no tricksters out there. There are in the spirit world. There's a pranksters and the, you know, we call them elementals or whatever you want to call them. There are energy personalities that play games. Mm -hmm. But do you know what? If you've got if you've got even someone coming towards you with a knife, there are some ninja warriors out there that have no fear of it, know exactly what to do and how to handle it and not to be. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. It depends on the individual who you are. So I hope you attract more. I really do. And if you feel after all of that, it's still what you call low vibrational and it's a bit of a trickster, 
you just banish it from you. I'm not sure what it was. I wasn't in the right frame of mind when it was happening to, I was, ah, you know. You, ma you could have manifested it then. Yeah. Oh, I'm most certainly, but you know, I'm not, um, living, living out in the country, you have, um, you're already kind of in tune with everything going on. So when everything seems off. Yeah. Seems I mean, you've got all what we call, there's energy personalities in the forest. We call them, people call them the elementals. Um, there's what we call Fay. There's, you know, I don't know. You've got Bigfoot out there, and um, I don't know if we have Bigfoots here, but anyway, you've got it all out there. But remember, if you're coming from the Seth material, all things at all times, all places now, yeah, it's mm -hmm. all happening now. There is, in principle, there is nothing as reincarnation. You, you're still going on different timelines now, now, all now, happening now. Dream, 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 dream. And you're just not conscious. Well, now people are becoming conscious way of a couple. Yeah, you can call it reincarnation. It really doesn't matter. But that timeline's still going. All potentiality right. is still going. So whatever that being is, whether it's a monster, a dinosaur, or whatever, it's still going on another timeline. It's a potentiality. It's quantum consciousness. And well, quantum consciousness has proven that it's all going possible potentialities now and how we can cross and quantum bubbles crossing over it's does that resonate oh, yeah. it's a good time to be alive for all this uh, you know oh my god you know sometimes sometimes i think oh fuck it i'll get me out of there i've had enough and sometimes i go oh my god i wouldn't miss this for the world so right. you whatever way you choose to experience the experience you're in but no Go ahead. Sure. No, no, uh, you. Sure. I was going to say it hasn't been a bad life. You know, looking back, there's been some rough patches, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty content with existence these days. Well, I tell you what, if you if you don't post my t-shirt tomorrow, you're going to see what a bad life's like. I'm telling you. Track me down in Appalachia. Oh, I'll track you down, all right, and your gay t-shirt. No, I didn't say that. I so didn't say your happy t-shirt. Right. Your happy T-shirt. Now, me and no, we had a discussion and we about my T-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. No, we had a discussion how words change. Um, when I was younger, I used to watch American films, um, and comedies and romantics and Marilyn Monroe. My, my, well, I didn't watch them. My mother had them on, and I'd always hear them say, "Have a gay day," and it meant have a happy, happy, happy day. You can't say that word now, can you? Because they've changed it to something yeah. else. I can't say, you know, ha I can't say have a happy day because I'm not allowed because someone says I'm not allowed to say. Well, see, I just do it anyway. I don't know when, when the situation calls for it. I don't really care. You, you've probably noticed I don't really care about social. Know, media, I know. You but know. you do care about me. Did you come and tell me you Bought that shirt today just for me, and I braided my hair just for you. Yes, I knew it. I'm like, I have to. I can't look like a psychotic killer. No when I end the show. I have to wear no. a gay shirt. Yeah, so here <laughs> you got that one in. Right, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up now. We've gone. I think we've gone two seven. Yeah, we've gone two. Just coming up two hours. I oh, tell yeah. you what, it's been fantastic, William. We're coming up two hours, yeah, seven, eight, it's ten to nine, eight minutes to nine. Um, I'm going to have to bring you back down the line in the future for, I'll you know. I'll definitely do it. Part three. Um, if you could leave after the discussion we've had today, um, if anyone, you know, any advice or anything, I will say up front, if anything we've said tonight resonates with you, please take it and do your own research. If it doesn't resonate with you, put it to one side. We're just sharing, we're having a conversation. We're right. trying to find the truth just like you are. Um, but if you could leave something to anyone that watches it live or in the replay, um, what words of, no pressure here, wisdom would you leave? Well, try and get them that link I sent you where I'm reading the Seth material. I will let do. Something that I can leave to them. I don't know. I mean, really enjoy yourself. The thing is, the more I delve into this um self-actualization, self-realization world, this world of metaphysics, uh, the more my life seems to become like a platitude. You know, those motivational posters you'd see around when you were in, in schools or the corporate yeah, world yeah. about attitude and teamwork. And 
Well, yeah. all that shit is true. Yeah. Like basically don't take anything seriously. Just enjoy yourself. Uh, and it is really hard to get there. Actually. I did a lot of worry to get to a point where I don't have to worry anymore. Yeah. It's, it's also senseless. So it is, it's part of the process, the more, the more I learn about creating your own reality, the easier it is. We've, we've overcomplicated it so much. Mm-hmm. And this has really happened to me from talking to, to Ardef and listening to the ET whisperer is mm-hmm. that whatever questions you would have thought you had for someone else, you really can answer yourself. If you just think it through, ask the question outside, just ask the question. Like in my mind, if I have a question mm-hmm. for one of Rob's aliens, like usually Ardef, I'll think to myself, Oh, I should ask Ardef this. And then it starts this whole process where I basically would imagine what he would say anyway. And I get the answer, mm. uh, you know, just by pretending I've talked to Artif. Yeah. So it's um, don't overcomplicate your life. Yeah. I, guess, I guess that's my real takeaway message is yeah. that all of this reality creation comes from the very simplest places. It does. And that is from you. And my words are, I am so grateful to all of you that support the show and share out the show, I'm doing my best to bring you the most profound information from as many different guests, many different perceptions, because I so love the human experience. I'm loving it. I love hearing different perceptions, ideas, concepts. And for me, I, it's just it's just ex- exhilarating because it then it helps me to become the bigger and greater version of myself. And that's what we're all about. And I thank you for watching Open Minds Live chat show. And I'm Gloria. Until the next time, it's bye for now. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.